Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe Hindi from AndroidAuthority.com. Google I.O. is in full swing, and that means a new Android P beta is available. This one looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, so let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the stuff that didn't change all that much from the first developer preview. This is mostly the under the hood stuff and UI stuff from the first preview, the rounded colorful icons, the settings menu, the app drawer, and the homepage layout and design haven't changed hardly at all from the first preview. In addition, as we pointed out in our previous Android P video, the navigation of the UI doesn't change in any substantial way from earlier versions of Android, the home screen is where it's supposed to be, the settings are where they're supposed to be, and the quick settings are where they're supposed to be. There are actually quite a few changes that we will discuss momentarily, however the overall look and design hasn't changed from the first Android P dev preview. If you want to see all of that, we'll have our hands on of our first video linked up in the video description below. Okay, so let's get to the new UI elements. Like we said, there weren't a whole ton of changes to the looks, but there were a few big features that were added in the latest Android P beta. For starters, the recent apps menu is now a horizontal card view instead of a vertical one. You can swipe left and right to see all of your open apps, along with the information that was on the screen when you last left that app. Additionally, Android P now shows you five suggested apps along the bottom, along with a Google search box. You can now close apps out of your recents by swiping upwards, and the recent apps menu has also been renamed to the overview screen. The suggested apps in the overview screen are the same as they are in the app drawer, but the app drawer did get some new digs as well. On top of recommending applications, the app drawer now recommends actions based on the stuff that you do. David Burke showcased this during the Google I.O. keynote, but we imagine that we'll have to wait a little bit longer for it to appear for us. These settings have had suggestions for a few years now, however, the update now puts them in clean white boxes instead of the blue boxes from previous versions. It's a small thing, but it definitely makes them more noticeable. Other than that, aside from a few subtle color changes and some new animations like the one when you go back to the home screen from an app, the UI isn't all that different and the changes are mostly minor and shouldn't affect usability at all. Oh, and the Android P Easter egg is still the same as well. In our first Android P video, this was the shortest segment. In this one, it's going to be the longest. Google announced a ton of new Android P features during Google I.O. this year, and we're going to talk about as many of them as we can. The first and biggest change is the new gesture controls. You can enable this yourself if you run Android P by going into the settings, going into system, and then gestures, and then enabling the swipe up on the home option. This enables the new UI. On the home screen, all you see is the home button. However, inside of applications, the back button makes its triumphant return, and using applications feels exactly the same as it did with the regular soft key setup. We applaud Google for changing things up, but leaving some things the same so as not to cause confusion. Long pressing the home button brings up Google Assistant as per the norm, and short tapping the home button will take you back to the home screen as per the norm. That much hasn't changed. You can do a half swipe up to view the new recent apps menu, also known as the overview menu, and a full swipe upward will open the app drawer. You can also swipe up again from the overview menu to access the app drawer again. And now finally, we get to see why the recent apps menu was redesigned. You can tap, hold, and move the home button to the right. This moves through your recent apps much like a Rolodex. When you let go, Android P opens the application you were on when you stopped moving. When you get so far, the recent apps will start to scroll, and once you're in this control mode, you can also move back to the left to scroll in the opposite direction. My thoughts on this are a little bit mixed. Swiping the home button to the right to Rolodex through your recent apps is vastly faster than the old way. However, I'm unsure about the half and full swipe gestures for the overview page and the app drawer respectively. Android P did seem to get it right most of the time though, so it's probably not a big deal. Let's move on to some of the other features. A big premise that Google pushed at I.O. this year was digital well-being. The forefront of that initiative is the Dashboard app. This application shows you things like your usage stats, what apps you use, how often you use them, and a lot more. From there, you can limit your own app usage by setting time limits for all of your apps. Once the time is up, the OS will lock you out of that app for a while so that you can go do other stuff. We were actually unable to find this in the Android P beta, so we're not sure if this one is available to people right now or not. If you do have apps access to it, leave us a comment and let us know. Other features follow this same vein. A new feature called Wind Down automatically turns on Do Not Disturb mode and grays out all of the colors on your screen to indicate that it's time for bed. Do Not Disturb mode was also improved to completely eliminate notifications when it's switched on, even from the notification shade and the ambient display. You must turn Do Not Disturb mode off to view all of your notifications. Finally, it's easier than ever to shut your phone up. Putting your phone face down automatically initializes Do Not Disturb mode and quickly pressing the 
the volume up and the power button together puts your phone on vibrate quickly. Google is calling that the new shush feature. The notification settings also got a bit of an overhaul as well. There is a new manage notifications button in the panel notifications. You can better adjust all of your settings there without digging into the actual app settings. Additionally, Android P will remember when you swipe away the same notification over and over again and start asking if you want to just silence those particular notification channels for good. There are also additional options for those who have apps assigned as work apps and regular apps. Finally, there is a new screenshot annotation feature. After you take a screenshot using the power menu, you, you can tap the edit button and edit the screenshot as needed. We take it that means the screenshot feature in the power menu is here to stay and we're still really happy about it. Also, before we forget, the rotate button introduced in the first Android P beta is still there, but the icon has now moved to the other side of the phone. Otherwise, it does the exact same thing. As per the norm, Google is cooking up a bunch of under the hood stuff that we didn't hear about in the first developer preview. Of course, all the stuff from the first developer preview is still true, so again, we recommend you watch the first video we did to get the complete picture here. We'll just talk about the new stuff from Google I.O. To start with, Google is integrating machine learning into their battery saving optimizations. It's called Adaptive Battery, and basically it uses machine learning to determine which applications you use infrequently. It then limits their usage to improve your battery life. This is something that we can't test yet because it's been out for like a day, but over time this should pair well with those mode to save you a bunch of battery life. Additionally, Android P will introduce new tools to Android app developers. They include App Actions and Slices. App Actions allows applications to bring up pertinent parts of their application inside of other apps, such as Google Search. Slices is a subset of that functionality that works almost solely in Google Assistant, Google Search, and other apps like that. Finally, Google announced MLKit, an API that allows developers to use machine learning in their applications. This could help in a variety of ways, however, it's difficult to say exactly how without knowledge of how it'll be used inside of an app. In other words, it'll be helpful in different ways for different apps. We also believe that Project Treble is finally showing its power. This particular developer preview is available on all of the Pixel devices and then several non-Google devices as well. We'll have that list linked up in the video description below if you want to see it. Oh, and before we forget, Google is applying their machine learning goodness to the adaptive brightness as well. The adaptive brightness will take your input into consideration when automatically adjusting the brightness settings, and thus it will learn from how you like it. It's like the adaptive battery thing, but with brightness instead. Android P is shaping up to be a much larger update than we originally thought. The first developer preview really was just a preview, and this one feels a lot more like a complete product. There are still the occasional sluggish moments and glitches, but this also feels more complete and usable than in the first preview. Google is shipping this one out through the Android P beta program on a bunch of non-Google devices, so it's probably safe to say that it's good enough to run as a daily driver. Those who want to try it out will need one of the compatible devices, and then from there, you just sign up for the Android P beta on Google's website, and an update will be pushed to your device. Again, we'll have that link in the video description below if you want to try all of this out for yourself. And of course, we always want to know what you think. Android P is turning into one of the biggest Android updates since the first launch of material design. This one definitely no longer feels like just an iterative update. Tell us what you think in the comments below. And that about does it for this one, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you didn't, well, you still know what to do. We have links all over the place in the video description below if you want to learn more. As always, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful day.